right, let me show you around my closet. So we'll come in here. The first thing I want to show you is that over here, I've got a chest of drawers that I built. Um, and I did it for a couple of reasons. Uh, one reason is um, to be able to have my dresser items, those you know, sort of small or delicate items or items that you want to uh, keep safe. Um, and have those closer to where my process occurs, so in my closet. Um, the other thing is, is that you'll notice that they, I've made really narrow uh, drawers, so they're not very deep. One thing that I don't like about traditional dresser drawers is that they're so deep that you can't find uh, what you need in them. So these, I've got some little labels. You can see uh, what's in there, wool vest, silk t-shirt, silk color. When you pull the drawer out, the only things that are in the drawer uh, pretty much everything's right on top. Uh, so I, it's only deep enough for two layers of clothes. Um, same thing, you know, my sock drawer. So over here I've got socks and uh, I'll pull them from the front and then uh, when I do laundry, then I bring the clean ones in and I can just slide these forward and they don't have to be perfect. Uh, slide them forward and just put the, uh, put the fresh clean ones there in the back. And uh, so that's kind of how my process is able to work with those small drawers and then everything's uh, visual and visible with the, with the labels uh, that are there. So over here on the other side of my closet, I've got some uh, shelving. Now when we bought the house, they were pretty deep shelves. So uh, there was just this shelf and this shelf, so every other shelf that you see there. Uh, so really, really deep shelves and uh, the things that you put on there would kind of get lost, they get buried underneath uh, the other items. So I just went to Lowe's and bought a, uh, another shelf to put in between, just attach those with a little bracket. And uh, now the items are just a few, uh, a few clothing items deep there. You can see I've got labels on these shelves. Now when I have shelving, uh, shelving units, I like to put my labels on the side. Um, I found that whenever I have labels, labels that are on the shelf itself. I never know if the label corresponds to the item above or the item below. And so it provides some, there's some confusion there. Uh, so I have labels on the, on the side. Um, so you can see over here, uh, golf thermal bottoms and tops and golf shorts and dress shorts. And so the items that uh, are there are, are next to the labels. Um, it also gives an indication of what's missing. So here's my uh, jeans shelf and you can see uh, there's one missing and that's the pair I'm wearing right now uh, down here that says blue sweatshirt and uh, there's blue sweatshirt missing and that one's in the laundry so it kind of gives me an indication of uh, what's missing what's being used currently what's dirty and then when uh, when I need to uh, replenish you know when the items are clean where it goes so it makes it very obvious so one thing about uh, lean and about doing 5S is the items that are um, not used as often should be put in an inconvenient location. So now these clothes that you see here are clothes that I wear all the time. Uh, I don't get dressed up a lot. And so the uh, my suits and uh, heavy winter coats, living in Houston, things like that, um, I don't use very often. So I have those actually back in the corner they're behind these other clothes here. So you can see I've got a, another um, a plastic sort of a dust cover there for these items. And uh, so they're back. Now to get to them, it's a little more difficult, convoluted out of the way. Um, I do have to pull the other clothes out of the way to get to them, but I don't access them very often. A couple of times a year, really not that often. But what I did is I did create these labels. And so the items that are in this bag uh, are in the order that they're listed on the label. So the wool short coat and is first and gray suit. So for instance, if I wanted to get my blue suit, um, I don't have to be able to see it. I can just reach into the bag, grab for the third hanger in, and the third hanger in will be my blue suit. So even though it's not as convenient to get to, uh, to get the items, I've tried to eliminate as much waste as I can. On my, I guess, uh, Casual, uh, casual, dressy, sort of every day, the things that I wear uh, for teaching at school. Um, those items, now I take them to the cleaners periodically. And so what I've done, I'm going to open this bag so you can kind of see what's in here. But I've created labels on the hangers. And it's just 
tape and I've written on it. Um, and that way I know uh, what the item is, what the item should be. Same thing with my pants here. And I'm going to tell you about my process for choosing what items I um, uh, choosing what items I wear. Uh, but I've got labels there so that if there's an item that's at the cleaners, I know uh, which one that is. Um, the other thing that benefits me there is that I've got a matrix. I'll sort of show you this real quick. That I keep up on top here. Uh, that has uh, it has it's a matrix of the different clothing combinations that I can wear with a jacket or pants or a shirt, um, so that I know what matches and what doesn't. So I can pick out a shirt, a pants, a jacket, check the matrix to make sure that it actually matches, and if it doesn't, I can make adjustments from there. Now, what I really like about uh, my closet is that um, I store things. I try to uh, store things sort of. Uh, point of view storage as much as I can. So I've got it divided by product families. So this is kind of uh, uh, casual items here. So here you see uh, knit polos. So they're sort of like everyday polos. And then down below, they're on top. And down below, I have khakis. So my khakis go with the knit polos. So I keep the tops on top, the bottoms on the bottom. Here are golf shirts. And I keep them here. And then right down below them, are the uh, the golf pants and then I have my dress shirts which I wear uh, every day at school at the University of Houston and uh, then over here is where I keep the pants that go with those so that's a I guess something that's a little bit uh, different maybe that's um, not a perfect pattern in my closet but it works for me um, but what I really like is how this closet organization facilitates my process for choosing clothes. So you'll notice here, I do not have my clothes organized by color. Okay, so the reds aren't all together, the blues aren't all together. They seem sort of in random locations, but this is actually um, organized for me to be able to tell what I've worn, what I need to wear, and where items go back. So let me kind of explain um, how this would work. So here we are, uh, the knit polos, and you can see on all of these, now these are just uh, foam board. Let me pull this one out so you can kind of see. It's just foam board and I've cut sort of a little squirrely loop in it, uh, taped a hanger on the back for support, and that will just fit right in there. And this, so those are dividers between the different clothing sections, so I know what goes where. Um, but you can see there's a little arrow that's over here. So that arrow means something to me. What that means is for all my clothes, now this is a pattern. Uh, this is part of the standardization that I have in my closet. Uh, part of my pattern all the way through my closet is that I always pick items that I'm going to wear from the right and then I replace them uh, when they're clean on the left. So pick from the right and then I replace them back on the left so that all my clothes all the way rotate, always rotate through. So when I come in, if I'm going to choose an outfit to wear and I'm going to choose, uh, you know, a knit polo to wear, then I go to the right. Now, I do not have to pick the item that's all the way on the right. So, you know, there's days uh, when you look at your clothes and you say, you know, I don't want to wear that. Um, I'd rather wear something else. So I don't, I'm not rigid where I have to pick the item that's all the way on the right. But what I say to myself is, if I don't pick the item that's all the way on the right, then I take one of these, you see, I've got these little clothespins. They're here on the side, hold that up. Just a little mini clothespin. And so what happens is I just take a mini clothespin. I've got clothespins on these uh, um, on these dividers. I take a clothespin and I put it on the hanger. So what that tells me is that's an indication. It's a visual sign to me that I have skipped that item. Eh, so no big deal. Okay, so let's say we're, we pick this item. So I pick this shirt. Okay, so I'm going to take this shirt. And let's see if I can pull this off real quick and demonstrate. And so I pull the shirt off and I wear it. And now I've got the empty hanger. So I take the empty hanger and I put the empty hanger back on the left. I don't hang it back where I got that shirt from. Okay. So now this tells you that there are three knit polos in the laundry. Okay, just like over here, there's one golf polo in the laundry. So you can tell how many shirts you have in the laundry. Uh, then when they get laundered and need to be hung back up, it's very clear where they come and, be, and are hung back up. They're hung back here. Um, and so if, when, uh, if my wife is putting away my clothes, um, I, like I said, I usually put away my own clothes, but if for some reason someone else who's unfamiliar with my process is putting back the clothes, 
it's very obvious where they go back. They go back on the empty hangers. So I'm always rotating through my clothes, uh, wearing them evenly all the way through. And the other thing is, is that with these um, clothespins, if a hanger gets three clothespins on the hanger, then the rule that I have for myself is, a hanger gets three clothespins on it, then that's an indication that I do not like wearing that shirt anymore. I have skipped it now three times, and so that tells me I don't wear it anymore. So that's my signal to take that shirt off and to give it away to charity. If I'm going to add new shirts to my rotation, I just add them in where I'd add other shirts and they'll automatically be um, uh, rotated in with my other clothes. Uh, because I have different numbers of shirts to pants, then I'm all the time wearing different shirt pants combinations of clothes. So it also just uh, rotates my outfits so that I don't just have um, one dimensional outfits so that they uh, are continually rotated through. But like I said, the key to this, and lots of people have uh, liked my uh, closet organization and have said, you know, I, I'd love to do it exactly the same way, or can you come do your closet, my closet, like you did yours? And um, the thing is, my closet works for me because it facilitates my process for picking clothes and getting clothes and putting clothes back. Um, it would probably not work for everybody, uh, but it does work for me. And so uh, I wanted to share that with you. I hope that you can uh, use my closet organization, maybe a couple of um, the things that you see here and make improvements to the visual management and the productivity of your own daily processes.